Welcome back to Streamline Entertainment. It's uh, Marvin speaking. We're going to get straight into a video that someone told me to have a look at. It's called The Last Trip, um, which I've subscribed on, and it's, 50, 50, um, it's called 55 Island Serial Killer, Tenerife, Spain. Let's get straight into it. Um, I, the, it was just an intro, basically, and she talked about, um, obviously, the scope of the Jay Slater case. Uh, but you can go over and listen to it all. But um, I just wanted to sort of get into the serial killer part. Let's get straight into it. When I researched the list of missing and murdered in Tenerife, I went back about 40 years because serial killers can be active for a long time. If there is a killer, and he started in his 20s, 40 years ago, he'd be in his 60s now. For the timeline, that made the most sense to me. First up, we have 18-year-old Billy Bennett, who vanished from his holiday in Tenerife at the end of 1985. Billy was from Holborn, London, and originally planned his vacation to Tenerife with a friend. But at the last minute, his friend backed out. Billy decided to go anyway and make it a solo adventure. He stayed at the Las Americas Resort and was a regular at the Sgt. Pepper's nightclub during his trip. Eventually, his friend joined him, but brought his girlfriend. So the boys only met up a handful of times. On one of the occasions they met up, his friend said Billy seemed rather worse for wear that he had lost all his money and had nowhere to stay. And this was before cell phones, surveillance cameras, and all the other technology we take for granted. Billy was last seen in person on December 1st, 1985. There have been no leads in his disappearance. In March 1987, 23-year-old Ricky Decada went to work in Tenerife for the holiday season. He was really excited about being there, hanging out in the sun, meeting loads of new people. And at that time, the 80s club scene in Tenerife had quite the reputation for sex, booze, and sunshine. It was definitely the place to be. Ricky's holiday job was working for Sgt. Pepper's Disco Pub, selling tickets for beach parties in Playa de las Americas, the same bar that Billy Bennett was frequenting just two years earlier. In October, he called his mom asking for money to get a flight home for Christmas because his visa was up. His mom sent him the money, and he called back once he received it. But that was the last time they ever heard from him. When he didn't show up or contact his family over Christmas, the family started to worry. A week after Christmas, his uncle and sister went to Tenerife to search for him. But there was no sign of him, and no one had any information on where he was. It seemed he also vanished without a trace. Five months later, his passport was sent back to his family in London, addressed to Ricky from a tourist organization in Spain, saying that it had been handed in to them and they hoped he enjoyed his stay. But it was never clear who turned the bag in. Wow, that's just so off-key. Um, obviously, there must have been a chain of events that somebody knew what happened to him. Um, for that to get, you know, the passport to get sent back to his family or um, dodgy police involvement. That's strange. A year after he disappeared, a witness said she bumped into Ricky in London, but that only led to a dead end. There were... That wasn't true um, about um, Ricky. Um, at the end of the day, Ricky basically um, was killed out in there um, for a robbery which went wrong. That's what happened to Ricky. That was a very, very sad story and quite a powerful one as well. And once again, his friends didn't want to know him when he went Pete Tong on the drugs. Rumors that he crossed the wrong people who were part of the local mob and involved in drugs, and he was murdered. But that came as a shock to his family because it would have been totally out of character. Ricky was sporty and healthy and the type of person who walked away from trouble not the type to get mixed up in drugs. A few years later, five unnamed bodies were found in Tenerife, and his DNA was tested against them in 2001, but all came back inconclusive. Ricky Dakota has never been found. 
Kevin Ainley from Lancashire, England, went to Tenerife in February of 2004. I actually did a video on some of these missing people, uh, people, so you can actually go back and see my videos. But this is um, very, very interested in as well, the breakdown. When he was just 24 years old, he moved to the tourist area of Playa de las Americas and worked as a promoter at the Sportsman Bar in a popular area known as the Patch. The day he disappeared, June 13, 2004, he had been out to bars and clubs with a friend before having a meal at Merlin's Chinese Buffet Restaurant. The last confirmed sighting of Kevin was walking towards the Sportsman Bar after eating. When Kevin failed to show up for work, his friends raised the alarm with police and his family back in the UK. His personal belongings and passport were later found in his apartment. Kevin's family has searched relentlessly for him, and in 2005, two officers from Lancashire traveled to Tenerife to help local police search. But no clues have ever been found. It's like he simply vanished off the face of the earth. Kevin Ainley is 5 feet 10 inches tall and medium build with blue eyes and short brown hair. He was wearing a dark t-shirt and blue tracksuit. He has distinctive tattoos on his arms, including the name Kevin, a little devil, and a Native American woman. On August 3rd, 2022, 23-year-old Oliver Heiss took a solo trip from Bremen, Germany to the island of Gran Canaria, about 40 miles east of Tenerife. He was an enthusiastic hiker and planned to explore the Canary Islands, bringing with him a blue backpack, a sleeping mat, and a compass. He spent the first night in a cave in Gran Canaria and took a ferry to Tenerife the next day. He posted a photo on social media from the Los Barros area in El Rosario and sent a message to a friend at 4 p.m. Guys, that was the last sign of life from Oliver. There were extensive search efforts, and the analysis of his phone records showed he may have traveled to the east coast of Tenerife and was possibly exploring the hippie communities there. On August 18th, his family went to the airport in Hanover to pick him up in hopes that he made his flight home, but he never showed up. There was a reported sighting on August 20th of that year by a bar manager near Pico de las Flores, but it didn't lead to any more information. He is 5 feet 9 inches tall, with reddish brown hair and a full beard. He speaks with a German accent, was wearing a brown kaftan and a Palestinian-style black and white scarf, a red waist bag, Ray-Ban sunglasses, and carrying a blue camouflage backpack. Oliver Heiss has never been found. On October 24th, 2022, Natalia Hernandez, a 34-year-old from Madrid, took a flight from Tenerife to Grand Canaria. Just before boarding the flight, she turned her phone off. When she landed at the La Palma airport, she left without collecting her suitcase and never returned to get it. She intended to take a bus to a hotel in Fuencaliente, where she was going to start working but she never arrived. It's not even known if she ever left the airport, and her family has no idea where she could possibly be. That's so strange. That is odd. Unless, you know, someone picked her up and said, look, walk with me. Um, but you would have thought that there would be a lot of CCTV cameras. Um, but like I said, if it's mafia-related, you know, things can go missing. We, we, you know, we know how bent some of the Tenerife policing officials are. The circumstances of her disappearance are extremely strange, and there are Very. absolutely no clues. Natalia has long blonde hair, blue eyes, a light complexion. She's five feet tall and 110 pounds. She has a tattoo from her right shoulder to the middle of her back, a nose piercing on the right side, and was last seen wearing dark colored pants and a coat with pink sneakers. Natalia Hernandez has never been seen again, and there are still no clues in her disappearance. Gary Watson Shearer was 53 years old when he went missing on March 16, 2023, in the island of Lanzarote. 
another of the Canary Islands. He arrived from Scotland on a solo trip to celebrate St. Patrick's Day. When he got to the Osis apartments, he sent a photo to his family as he sat poolside. Then he put some items in a safe in his hotel room and took about 70 pounds spending money with him. Gary texted his mom at 5.30 p.m. to say he was on his way out for the night. He was then captured on CCTV at the spa shop and is believed to have asked someone for directions to bar 767. Another CCTV image shows him walking near the spa alongside a man about the age of 60 to 70 with white hair and a beard, wearing a brown jacket and a white shirt with dark pants. Gary finally made it to bar 767, a Celtic-themed bar where his phone pinged for the last time. There were reports that Gary was seen on CCTV lying unconscious in a doorway at 1.30 a.m. the following morning, but those reports were never confirmed. Police are still looking to identify the man he was seen in the first CCTV video footage. Gary's family still calls his phone daily, hoping that he will answer, but he has never been seen or heard from since. Wow, that's odd. That is odd. I mean, that is odd. I mean, I think when people just go for a holiday or they just um, mountain climbing around the area and they go missing, that's odd. It is very, very strange. Um, but there are like people that live in the caves and, 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 and people that live rough. And like I said, altercations um, can happen. But like I said, where are they? Um, getting rid of these bodies is very, very strange, that is. And it, like I said, they possibly are. Um, uh, basically, I think some of them are rogue-related, and I think some of them are just um, sometimes killed by opportunists. I really do think that. When Gary went missing, he was wearing a green and white Celtic FC football shirt, white shorts, white trainers with a blue and yellow stripe, and carrying a black man bag. He is 5 feet 3 inches tall and slim build. Gary suffers from epilepsy and type 2 diabetes. Plus, he walks with a distinctive limp. He has black, graying hair, brown eyes, and several tattoos. A distinctive tattoo that says Gary is on his neck. Having exhausted all the leads, the police case has been closed and marked unresolved. But his family continues to actively search for him. In March of 2024, an appeal was launched for a woman named Andrea, who is thought to be Spanish, but may have a Dutch dual nationality. The alarm was raised by a local musician who had allowed her to spend a few nights in his motorhome in the popular resort of Los Cristianos because she had nowhere else to stay and no income. But then she vanished. The musician tried to make inquiries and contact her Facebook friends but did not receive any clues to her whereabouts or any more about who might be searching for her. She's also thought to have previously lived in the Netherlands, but her relatives are unknown. She has not been seen since and is presumed missing. On April 24th, 2024, a Belgian couple that had been living in Tenerife were reported missing. Unfortunately, 66-year-old Laura Gaston was soon found floating in the sea off the coast of Tenerife. Yeah, this was kind of crazy because that wasn't that long ago either. And the story is horrendous, to be honest with you. And I hope um, that, obviously, the family get justice um, for the old couple that were killed. This was terrible. If they buy a fisherman... Reports said that she was missing one hand and both legs and her... Disgusting. That's unbelievable. That's unbelievable how someone could do that to another person. That is really, really bad. I heard about this some months back and it's kind of a crazy case. Her head was wrapped in a plastic bag. <sighs> An autopsy confirmed she was murdered and the decomposition of her body confirmed she had died several days earlier. Her husband, Mark Francis... 71 years old, has not been found, but is presumed dead. Mark is 5 feet 7 inches, weighs about 160 pounds, and has green eyes. In June, Spain, working with Belgium's federal police, said they made three arrests 
two in Belgium, and one in Tenerife in connection with the gruesome case. But no further updates have been provided since then. And after that, the timeline brings us to British tourist Jay Slater, whose media attention inadvertently helped many other missing and murdered tourists gain attention for their cases. Jay was 19 years old when he went to Tenerife with some friends. On June 17th, they went to the NRG Music Festival at the Papagayo nightclub. And after getting back to their Airbnb, Jay got into a car with two men he met a few days prior. The three of them drove to another Airbnb about 40 minutes away. The men offered Jay a blanket, phone charger, cigarette, and a towel in case he wanted to shower, and they went to sleep. At 7.30 a.m., Jay posted a photo on Snapchat showing him wrapped in a blanket and holding a cigarette at the doorway of the property. Around 8 a.m., Jay asked the owner of the rental when the next bus was coming, and she told him 10 a.m. While Jay was putting his shoes on, one of the men woke up and offered to drive him home after he got some sleep. But Jay said he wanted to go get food. He then walked uphill along the road, the opposite direction of where he was staying. About 15 minutes later, Jay called one of his friends he was with in Tenerife, who told him to turn on his location and order a taxi, because the walk home would be 14 hours. While they were chatting, another call came through and Jay said he would call him back. At 8.50 a.m., Jay called the other friend he was with in Tenerife and said he was in the middle of the mountains with nothing around, that he needed water, and his phone was only on 1%. That was the last time anyone ever heard from Jay Slater. 29 days later, they found his body in a remote ravine. An autopsy concluded he died from head injuries consistent with a high fall. And while it sounds like a cut-and-dry case of misadventure, there were a lot of conspiracy theories out there, mostly centering around murder. It was because of these conspiracy theories, people started looking through the list of missing for commonalities, wondering if there were any ties that might lead to something more sinister. Let's take a look after this. Is there a serial killer in Tenerife? If there is, it wouldn't be the first serial killer on the island. That would be Damaso Rodriguez Martin, better known as El Brujo, or the Warlock, who was a Spanish serial killer and rapist. The Warlock committed his first murder on November 11th, 1981, when he killed a young man who was with his girlfriend in the area of El Moquino. The warlock was a voyeur who liked to watch couples having sex, but this time he went too far. First, he killed the man, and then beat and sexually assaulted Mazda while her boyfriend's body was still in the vehicle. He then put Mazda in the car and drove them both to Lano de los Viejos, where he abandoned them, but somehow Mazda lived. The warlock was caught and sentenced to 55 years in prison for murder, rape, theft of a firearm, and unlawful possession of weapons. But he didn't stay there long, because he escaped from prison on January 17, 1991, and fled to the mountains of Anaga, hiding and waiting for an opportunity to kill his wife, because she distanced herself from him while he was in prison. Wow, this guy's absolutely crazy, isn't he? Very crazy. Don't, don't tell me he's still out there, please. And for someone like the warlock, that was unacceptable. While he was waiting for a chance to murder his wife, he went on a killing spree. On January 23rd, the body of German tourist Carl Flick was found on a forest road. The next day, authorities recovered the body of his wife, Marta Cooper, who had obvious signs of strangulation. Authorities knew immediately that it was the work of the warlock. But it didn't stop there, because there were several robberies and another sexual assault that all pointed in his direction. On February 19, 1991, a family came home to discover their door had been forced open and the burglar was still inside. They alerted the police, who found the warlock in the house, but he had no intentions of going back to prison. It culminated in a huge shootout, and near the end he tried to end his own life by placing a hunting shotgun under his chin and firing, 
using his toes to pull the trigger. But because of the length of the gun, he survived. Still not wanting to surrender, he continued to exchange gunfire with the officers until he was dead. Which means he couldn't be the one murdering tourists all these years later. And on a side note, if you're into seeing creepy things, it is totally possible to visit Casa Fuset, the rundown abandoned building that the warlock hid in when he was on the run after escaping prison in 1991. There seems to be a lot going on, a lot going on, a really lot going on in Tenerife. Yeah, I don't think personally there's um, a serial killer there. I do think there's opportunist killers that are out there. And I also think um, that some of these cases are rug related and there are um, poor people who do prey on maybe single travellers and maybe fight to say something and end up killing them. I do think there's a lot of people getting away with a lot of stuff in Tenerife. It's located in the mountainous area of El Moquinal in La Laguna and a bit of a hike to find, but totally possible. The Fuset House is also linked to paranormal phenomena and satanic rituals, with many people claiming to hear sounds from beyond the grave. But back to the cases in this episode. Right, I'm going to leave it there, people, but um, do go over to 55 Island Serial Killer Tenerife in Spain. I personally don't think there um, is one. I do think there's opportunist killers out there and people that um, prey on vulnerable people. Um, especially foreigners um, traveling alone, you have to be extra careful. I do think some of these cases are um, rug related. Let me know what you think, people. Uh, Jamie BB, uh, Island Killer, 55. Brilliant. Tenerife, Spain. Very, very interesting stuff. Um, some of the cases of the missing people, I have got videos, but you have to go back to see whether you can find hundreds of videos, to be honest with you. But I did do a video on missing uh, people, to be honest with you. But this um, was very, very interesting. Let me know what you think, people, because like I said, this um, lady speaks very well for herself. Thank you. And don't forget to subscribe to myself and this lady as well, if you already haven't. Thank you.